Some of you may have noticed that my channel art changed. Well, that's thanks to the amazing Voss Steel. Do me a personal favor and check out his Redbubble. Do it. Or if you want some awesome graphic designs, go ahead and shoot him an email. It's right there and in the description. Bingo. This is not the history of names, not what names mean, not how they come into being, nor how they work. This is how to come up with good character names for your fantasy writing, D&D campaign, constructed world, or whatever else you're doing. First off, while I did do loads of research on various authors and everything, this is my own opinion that's based on a finite number of resources. And of course, I have non-universal points of view about certain things in world building. That being said, let's start off by taking a look at your character. Unless you want to build the character around the name, you'll need to know some basic facts about them. Know their economic class, a bit about the culture they come from, their motivations and goals, and what their role in the story is. If you can do that, BUT CAN YOU DO THIS? Naming this person will be much easier. When coming up with the name, you ultimately have two things to think about. Connotation and familiarity. For your audience to be able to remember the characters, each important name should be easily readable, pronounceable, and memorable. You also don't want to have names that are too similar to each other, Sauron and Saruman being a pretty good example. I'd suggest avoiding using the same first letter in two different names. As simple as you are. And I knew right at the beginning that I was going to have more than 26 characters, so... Plus, making an easily read fantasy name can be very difficult. English has weird rules about spelling and stress. So if your character comes from a place that has a bunch of different sounds and emphasis rules than English, you'll have to screw around with either your spelling of the name or its language of origin so that your audience will be able to read and remember it. It doesn't matter how cool your made-up language, it doesn't matter how symbolic the name may be, if it's 12 syllables long with clusters of click sounds, few English speakers will care to remember it. Side note, I'm not saying you need to have a fully developed made-up language to create character names. However, I do suggest that every culture you build have a few clusters of letters that appear where they wouldn't in English. Dothraki has the KH, Valyrian has the AE and the Y, the name Daenerys does this part fabulously. Yes, Queen, slay! However, the name Daenerys does suffer from being a little bit tricky on how to pronounce it, but the TV show's got that one covered. So it's all good. If you want to maximize the audience's familiarity, give your character a real name. One thing to remember is that names convey a heavy amount of connotation. If you choose something like John, George, or Laura, your character will seem a little bit of a salt-of-the-earth type. If you choose a more unique but still familiar name, such as Gideon, Milo, or Lydia, the character will seem more special than the Johns and Georges they're surrounded by. And I'm sorry, Johns and Georges out there. I feel the pain. If your character is very high class, you could give them one of those preppy names, such as Cassandra or Percival. See, now we're focusing on how the name sounds. It's connotation. Usually, connotation is driven by what real-world language it's imitating. We see Greco-Roman names as sounding very prim and proper with a dash of powerful. Short Germanic names seem to be more down-to-earth and a bit more low-class. These are the two connotations that I see popping up everywhere. Let's take a look at Daenerys again. Looks good. Her name is very Latin. You could spell it D-E-N-E-R-I-S, and it would look super Latin, but no. I like the name Daenerys because it keeps the high and powerful connotations that a Roman-sounding name holds, but its spelling makes it seem more exotic and mysterious, and it makes the Latin influence less obvious. Very important to remember, make the influence less obvious. The name Gandalf sounds more Germanic and pagan, which makes it sound a bit lower in class, but also more naturey, which I think fits. Your objective here is to play with the name's connotation, but obscure it somehow so the audience doesn't think it's just another Roman name. And that doesn't mean spelling Tiberius like this, because no. Personally, I don't like seeing names that are just so obviously Greco-Roman that it kind of feels like a cheap ripoff, but I do understand that these kinds of connotations are important, and it's hard to obscure them. 
but try to have your own unique spin on it. Remember, the character's name absolutely does not need to convey a strong connotation or a lot of information. It just needs to fit what is presented about the character and their culture. With all that being said, let's look at actually making the names. We already talked about using a real name. You could also just grab a good sounding name from another culture, just make sure it's not a really, really important one because that could be bad. Another one of the most effective naming techniques is to find a random name and then corrupt the absolute shit out of it. Flip syllables around, weaken sounds, replace them all together, go nuts. This mostly works with simple names of low class people. You'll want the name to sound like it could be a real name in real life, it just isn't. Another way to do it is to combine some related words together and make it your character name. You can do this with English words or words from other languages. If you do English though, you should probably corrupt the words a little bit. Corrupt them all! At least for a character's first name. The tricky part here is maintaining the connotation of the words you picked. I talked a bit about this process in my place names video, but I'll recap the important parts here. You can change up the spelling but not the pronunciation, change up the vowels and change up the letters to be different sounds, and you can change where the emphasis falls, although that can be hard to show through spelling. And anytime I say change up, that means screw around with it until you find something you like. It will take time, it will take creativity, and maybe even a list of letters in front of you. Here is a good one for you to use. Basically, if you're corrupting English words to make a character name, your goal is to deface the words so the audience doesn't plainly recognize them as a couple of smooshed words together but you want the sounds of the name to be invoking of whatever image the original chosen words portrayed. A bonus way you could create names is to rely on fantasy tropes. Due to the whole connotation thing and a bunch of shared influences, there are a lot of sounds, specifically suffixes, that seem to fit with certain types of characters. Names ending in AR or OR often describe wizards and maybe evil, probably evil. Names ending in Adin or Adon seem to always be used for holy knights. Paladins. Whoa. Basically, just look around at other character names and see which suffixes are used on which kinds of people. If you want to use them, cool. I tend to avoid doing this because it makes the name seem cliche to me. But if you want to go for it, be my guest. So to recap, your name should be easily readable or pronounceable, it shouldn't look too similar to other characters' names, it should make use of connotation where appropriate, hopefully it'll look good on paper, and most importantly, it should sound right to you. Lastly, for all you real fans out there that stuck it out this long, remember that not every character name has to have this much thought put into it. But with enough practice, you'll be able to do this quickly because you'll already know what you like and you'll know all the rules and how to bend them, break them, and follow them appropriately. That's my two cents on the subject. In the future, I'll probably upload some videos that show me going through the naming process, probably more for places than people. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and make sure you dislike every video you ever like so that my ratio becomes higher in comparison. 399!